In this question, we're dealing with the dissolution of copper sulfate in water. So you can see from the question that five kilos of anhydrous copper sulfate are mixed with 20 kilos of water. This mixture is then agitated and kept at a constant temperature of 20 degrees Celsius until the maximum possible amount of copper sulfate has been dissolved. We're then told that any remaining undissolved copper sulfate is hydrated and forms solid copper sulfate 5 hydrate. The question then asks us to calculate the mass of any undissolved solid. To help us answer this question, we're also given some extra data and we're told something about the molecular masses of copper sulfate and the 5 hydrate form. And we're also told something about the solubility of copper sulfate in water at 20 degrees Celsius, which helpfully is the temperature that this process is operating at, as posed in the question. To begin with, we need to set up this problem correctly by drawing a diagram. So the diagram for this is simply a batch mixing tank. It has some sort of agitating device. And we know that after mixing has occurred, we have a tank which contains some solution and also contains uh, undissolved solid. Now we know what the process actually might look like. We now need to define our unknowns. So in this case, there are two unknowns. We don't know L, which is the mass of the liquid, which we know is a solution of copper sulfate dissolved in water. And we also don't know what we'll call S, which is the mass of the undissolved solid. So we now know that there's two unknowns and the question is actually asking us to find the mass of the undissolved solid, which we've now defined as S. So if we have two unknowns, we know that we're going to need to write two balance equations. So the next thing to think about is what we might balance in this system, which two balance equations we might write. When we think about which balance equations we write, there's two different kinds in general. We can write overall balances where we're balancing the total or overall amount of material in our system. And we can write component balances where we're balancing one particular component within our system. So to get us started, let's try writing an overall balance. So our first equation, we can say that the mass of the undissolved solid in our system plus the mass of the liquid in our system must be equal to the total mass of the system, which in this case is 25 kilos because we know we had 20 kilos of water to which we added 5 kilos of copper sulfate. So that gives us equation number one, which is our overall balance. In order to write our second balance, we need to look at a given component. So in this case, we're going to look at the copper sulfate. In order to do our component balance on copper sulfate, we need to introduce the concept of a mass fraction. So if we jump over to the course ebook, so Felder, page 43, tells us something about mass fractions. So we know that we've got more than one substance in our system. We've got water and we've got copper sulfate. And we can see here that we can define a mass fraction of the mass of our component of interest, A, divided by the total mass. So what this tells us is that a mass fraction is the mass of the component we're interested in in the system divided by the total mass of the system. So let's go back and apply that to our question. So we're now going to define two mass fractions and use them in our component balance on copper sulfate. So for copper sulfate, we'll say that the undissolved solid S multiplied by X, where X is the mass fraction of copper sulfate in that undissolved solid, plus L, times y, where y is the mass fraction of copper sulfate in the solution of copper sulfate, is equal to 5, because we know that we initially have 5 kilos of copper sulfate added to our system. 
So just to go back to those mass fractions, x is the mass fraction of copper sulfate in the undissolved solid. And y is the mass fraction of copper sulfate in the solution. So we now have two equations. We've introduced two extra unknowns, so we need to use the extra data given in the question in order to work out what our mass fractions, x and y, actually are. Once we have those, we can then go back and we can solve these two equations that are then being two unknowns. So if we go back to the data given in the question, we know that, first of all, at 20 degrees Celsius, 20.7 kilos of copper sulfate will dissolve in 100 kilos of water. So given our definition of a mass fraction, which said that the, the mass fraction of component A is equal to the mass of component A over the total mass, we can then use that to say that for a saturated solution of copper sulfate, y, the mass fraction of copper sulfate in that saturated solution, is going to be equal to the mass of our component, which is the copper sulfate, divided by the total mass, which in this case is 20.7 plus 100, which gives us that y is 20.7 over 120.7. So we found our y. Similarly now for finding x. Given the data on the molecular masses, we know that the fraction of copper sulfate in copper sulfate 5 hydrate must be the ratio of the two molecular masses. So that tells us that our mass fraction x is 159.6 over 249.7. So now we've defined y the mass fraction of copper sulfate in solution. We've defined our x the mass fraction of copper sulfate in copper sulfate 5 hydrate. So now we can go on, substitute those values into equation 2 and from there we can solve. Using our now newly defined mass fractions, equation 2 tells us that S times our defined X, so our mass fraction of copper sulfate in the undissolved solid, plus L times Y, where Y is the mass fraction of copper sulfate in a saturated solution of copper sulfate at 20 degrees Celsius. And we can use this data in this case because the system, the tank, is at 20 degrees Celsius. And that is equal to 5 kilos. So we've gone from these two, this equation here, we substituted in for x, we substituted in for y. And we now have our two equations. So equation 1. And uh, equation 2, where we substituted in for the values of x and y based on the data given in the question. So now we have two equations and two unknowns, and we can rearrange and solve. So doing that, remembering that we want to find S, the mass of undissolved solid, in our system. Equation 1 gives us that L is equal to 25 minus s. By substituting this into equation 2, we can then solve, and that will give us that s, the mass of undissolved copper sulfate, existing as copper sulfate 5-hydrate in the solution, is equal to 1.523 kilos. So what is important here to take away from this is that we've set up a problem 
using a diagram and interpreting the information in the question. We've labeled our unknowns. We've written the appropriate number of equations to solve for those unknowns. And then we've introduced the idea of a mass fraction and a definition. And using that and the data given in the question, we set up two simple equations which we could then solve. 